My name is Darion Kellum and I'm from Butler College Prep. And the name of my poem is Motel 6, I mean Motel 9.2 million black people in poverty. As I pull up to the curb, I'm quite skeptical about the place, but looking at Jenny's face gave me a temporary relief. She reminded me that my Uncle Sam said this place was full of people like me. And so in my head, I'm thinking like pretty sweet because if the world was full of people like me, then maybe they could understand my heritage and my source of depression is too deep to understand. So let me just pick up my bags and check in. After a long waiting lap, we finally make it to the desk. Behind it are two employees holding a dialogue between each other, ignorant to the fact that me and Jenny are standing right in front of them. Their skins resembling the pale moonlight and my skin representing the darkness that surrounds it in comparison. They spoke of good education. Students actually doing work. After school curriculum, the children knowing their work, they spoke of jobs being plentiful. They spoke of good credit score and safe environment and how they take their money and store it. All the things Jenny told me about, a utopia I've never known. The employee finally steps up and asks, how may I help you? And before I can formulate an answer, Jenny swiftly responds and says, let me get a special suite. As if she's used to the process. The employee hands over my key card, I mean my link card, the keys to my content and my ultimate destruction. This is Pa. This is who will escort you to your room. Not to be rude, but Pa was ugly. I didn't feel safe around him. But it seemed like there was more to him than just his rough skin. He didn't utter a word. In fact, he left after he got us settled in. The room featured a bed made of depression. Spring his suicidal thoughts onto my pillow, but again, looking at Jenny's face, made it all feel so safe. In fact, in a moment, it was intimate, entertaining the idea of her. She began to pull up her shirt. I observed the scars on her belly, which seems like it was caused by birth. The birth was something evil. As I passed at the floor, I noticed the tattoos that cover her body written in neat calligraphy, spelling out the names of neighborhoods that have become a distant memory, now filled with white faces and my spaces did. At this moment, I'm looking at Jenny different. I step back in fear and ask her, who are you really? She responds, Jenny, this is my nickname. My government name is gentrification. And before I could make up a rebuttal, Pa was walking in the room with a bag in his hand. He calmly walked over to gentrification and gave her a kiss on the cheek in a business-like manner. In a state of disgust, I ran to the sink to try to get some water to regain myself. But when I turned on the faucet, the only thing that came out was injustice. I looked in the fridge, no food for thought. Look in my head, no thoughts at all. Stunned. I felt the cold hands of Pa grab me by my neck and throw me against the wall. Out of his bag, he pulled out chains and deck, chaining me to the pipeline from school to jail. In the distance, I heard the voice of gentrification call Pa over to tell him to hurry up. But this time, she referred to him as poverty. And poverty utter uttered one last phrase to me before he left. This is what you'll suffer. And in a state of anger and confusion, I thought to myself, so this is Motel 9.2 many lives to count. Thank you. Yeah!